to show you her picture and tell you what it is. I'll, I'll hold it up. Can you tell them if I hold them up? Hold it up. Right. What is it? The alien monster. Yeah, um, um, and the other thing beside it is a symbol of an alien monster. Of a symbol of an alien monster? Wow. <laughs>
heard the, uh, the new latest blaster album, The Monster New Age Jesus?
It's not really any good to you, so it's not your third time too.
I don't have my mic strapped tonight. I couldn't find it before the show. So, I don't know if you guys have ever tried to sing without a mic strap, but it's, it's kind of hard. It's like playing guitar without a mic strap. You know, you gotta sit down or whatever. So, that's why I'm on the floor so much. Uh, what?
couldn't even tell, could you?
ever done. Now, you guys have seen rock and roll history by this.
I normally don't do it, I'm good, but we'll do one more. You guys ready? You sure? Is that all right? Oh, Derek took his cord out. Never mind. He got Okay, we understand. Oh, he's boring. Our roadie didn't come with this. We're not there. Do we hear another song? Blaster! 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 I mean, do you think there's any way you can plug that back in or something? They just did the dying. We're going to have a riot or something. Better do it. Hey, Pop. Oh, no. I mean, this is, you guys are asking for it. Okay, this is, I mean, if we play some down and dirty, just disgustingly, I mean, perverse in a qualified sense, rock and roll, I mean, just try to find me, please forgive me. Okay, um, I would like a drink of water, but you can come in.
all the DCR fans up. This is for all the DCR fans up there. Yeah. 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 He controls it. He created it. 
And he has done this thing. He has spoken into history. Okay? And here's what he's spoken. He has told us that we're, we're with failures. He says in his word that all have sinned, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us. Every single person has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. They said that there's no one righteous, not even one. Not one. No one. It goes on to tell us the result of that. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Wages. What you've earned by your sinful behavior. Your Calibretto seeing a whole lot about sinful behavior. It's something we got to recognize. It's just a reality. I mean, I don't see how anybody can deny that there's sin in the world. It's, it's the most ridiculous, <laughs> disgustingly ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And I love the people who say it, but it's just <laughs> absolute foolishness. Yeah. It is foolishness. <laughs> this is all this murder, rape, <laughs> all the way down to the everyday selfishness of every one of us. And you're going to say there's no sin. We're morally corrupt. We, we're corrupt. The, the penalty is death. I mean, that's just a fact. When we see injustice on the earth, we say, it's unjust. Make it right. Punish the evildoer. Maybe not everybody. Maybe some people in here are, you know, anti-death penalty or whatever. But I'd say even those people, they want some kind of justice. I mean, we want it. Um, and that's because God put it in our hearts to recognize that there's, there's evil and there needs to be a punishment for evil. There needs to be a, a justice served for the unjustness of the, the acts of every human being. And that's death. We deserve it. I mean, it's just not a pretty story. It's not a nice message. It's the reality. We deserve death. We deserve to be eternally separated from a holy God just by sheer fact. There's no emotion to it. It's just that it's a fact. We can't be perfect, be imperfect and spend all our lives with the perfect one. It doesn't make any sense. We've got to be separated from him. That's hell. That's separated from his loving presence. <clears throat> but it says that the wages of sin is death. And in that same verse, it's Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the good news. Gospel means good news. Amen. This is the good... <laughs> it's awesome. Thanks for saying amen. The good news is not only did God speak into history and have men write down a revelation so that we could know Him and know ourselves, but He spoke into history in a tangible, even more tangible way through His Son, Jesus Christ. It says that in the beginning was the Word. The Logos is the Amen. Greek word there. It's the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. This Word was God. It is God. That holy, perfect being that there's only one of. The Word. That's God. And Quite a few verses down it says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Reality. Reality. This happened. This is historical truth in space and time. Jesus Christ walked the face of the earth. He was the God-man. He came down to us, born as a little baby. Grew up. Lived perfectly. Perfectly. He didn't fail because... He did not fail. He was the God-man. He was without sin. And he knew the whole time he was here, he had a main purpose. And that was to go to the cross, the place of execution, perhaps the most gruesome and de degrading execution there's ever been, the cross, where he's stripped naked and nailed to two pieces of wood. He knew that was his destiny. That's what he came here for. Why? Because we have sin and we deserve death. But God is love. Amen. Don't question whether God's love. I mean, if that's a real question in your heart, ask the question because you want to know the answer. 
But God is love. How could God, a loving God, allow all this evil? Because He made us. I mean, I feel like I don't even need to say anything else. I mean, if you can ask that question, you've given the answer. He made you. You're a creature. You think. You live. You make choices. You have a will that He gave you. And it is necessary in a will that is given to one that they have a real choice. And we've chosen to screw it up. To sin and sever our relationship with this holy God. But God is love. He has done something about the evil in the world. He became one of us. He loves us. God is not scared of the punk culture. And, you know, I don't know how many of you guys have been in, oh, whatever you want to call it, non-Christian, secular, whatever, punk shows and clubs and culture, but it can be an incredibly wicked, vicious-looking scene. I mean, it's just amazing how crass they can be sometimes. I mean, it would just shock your minds, and maybe you've seen it. But, maybe, I've, maybe I've been it. And some of you have been it. But he's not afraid of that. Amen. Doesn't faze him. He's faced it. And that's what I'm talking about. He was here, and he faced all the opposition. And they hated him, and they wanted to kill him, and they did. And it was all part of his plan. That's how he accomplished our salvation. We needed to be saved out of the snare. We're caught, we're trapped in death. And he wanted to save us because he is love. It says that God demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, you have to do nothing, nothing to get any kind of favor in God's eyes, to look to Him, to turn away from your sin and look at Him, to talk to Him, anything. Nothing. He already did it. He knew you were a filthy, wretched sinner just like me, and He said, I'm dying for Him anyway because I love Him. I created her in Him, and I love Him. Love him. I love her. And I'm going to die for her because I want her to be saved. I'm going to give her that choice. Give him that choice. And that's why he died. He did die in space and time. He died. He didn't swoon and get kind of sick and faint and then he got revived while he was inside the tomb. He died. They stuck a spear in his side and blood and water came out. His heart burst. He was dead. Dead. God came and died. How was God still alive if He died? Because God the Son came and died. While God the Father continued to reign. It's a mystery. Three persons, one God. But it's accessible. We can, we can grasp it to some degree. It's just a fact. God, as the Son of God, came down and lived and died on the cross died for real, and then he rose again, three days later. Space and time. Yeah. Reality. History. Victory. Really happened. Really happened. The Jesus Seminar scholars can vote on it all they want. We can't <laughs> vote what happened in history. Honestly, Napoleon really won that battle around. Let's catch the vote, guys. Jesus rose from the dead. And he said the things that are recorded of him in the Gospels. And he lived those things. Yeah. And he offers forgiveness of sin. That wretched, filthy mess that we're in. He offers to forgive us of it. Clean us up. That's why he died. That's why he rose again. He's alive. He's real. He's here because he's God. You can't get away from him. He's everywhere. He knows everything inside of your heart. He knows everything. And yet, He loves you and me. And He is willing to forgive you of your sins. And bring you into His kingdom. And make you His son. Make you His daughter by adoption. And He just loves you guys. It says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts 
that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Gotta call Jesus Lord. Bow the knee. And He will save you. You gotta believe in your heart that He's alive, that He was risen from the dead, and He died for you. Not just your head, but your heart too. Amen. And whoever said God wants the whole man to my question earlier, that's right. He wants every bit of us. And that's the good news. The good news is that the, the, the sayings, the things we hear in America, sometimes spray painted, sometimes on buttons, sometimes on stickers all over, that maybe to some extent have become cheap and devalued in our hearts and minds, have an incredible depth behind them and are true. Simple things. Jesus loves you. Trust Jesus. It's true. Jesus loves you. God loves you. And He has made a way for you to be right in His eyes and to spend all eternity with Him. And if, you know, if there's no person who's doubting that in their hearts, you know, here this evening, that's okay. We can just rejoice together in the good news and be encouraged to continue to spread it like Jesus commanded us to. Be ready to give an answer for the hope that we have. Hope is real. I have hope of heaven, of eternity. And that's what I'm looking at. God, this, this life is very important. And I want to live it unto Jesus for everything He wants for it. But heaven is my home. That's where I'm headed toward. This place has fallen. It's decaying and it's winding down. And it's going downhill. And... God promises a new heaven and a new earth. Again, whoa, supernatural, amazing, but it's true. And that's what I'm looking forward to. And I'm looking forward to Jesus returning. Yes. He is indeed coming again, just like He came the first time. If He can rise from the dead, He can come back again. And He will, and He promised He would. And I'm looking forward to that. So, I just ask you guys to think about it, but take it seriously. And if you guys want to talk to us about it at all after the show, by all means do. I mean, let's talk. You know, ask some questions. We'll just talk. It's good. I guess I'm going to pray right now. And anybody who doesn't believe in Jesus, but is deciding tonight to believe in Him and ask Him to forgive you of your sins and wash away your sins and just saying I believe in you Jesus I put my faith in you you're my Lord if you want to do that just pray along with me um, no magic prayer no certain words it's your heart before God saying these things so I'm just going to pray something you know that somebody who wants to believe in Jesus can pray after me if they want to or something like it in their hearts and just tell it to God um, so if you want to do that Go ahead. <clears throat> Just pray something like this. Lord Jesus, I recognize tonight that you indeed are God and that you actually came to earth and died for me. I believe that you rose from the dead. Lord Jesus, please forgive me of my sins. Please wash them away like you promised you would do. I want to trust you from now on, Jesus. You're my Lord. I call you Lord Jesus. And I give you my heart. And I ask you to come in to my heart. Be my Lord. Thank you so much for dying in my place, Jesus. I accept your salvation. I accept you, Jesus. I believe in you. I put my faith in you. I trust you, and I thank you so much for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And Lord Jesus, I just pray for everyone else tonight that we would all be drawn closer to you, Lord. That we would 
focus on you, like your word says, to look unto Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. God, I pray that we would do the basic things in life just to follow you, to be your disciple. Just read your word every day. Just let it soak in and wash us and feed us. I pray that we would pray to you and, and talk to you every day. And I pray that we'd be in fellowship with other believers, Lord, and healthy churches that teach the word and, and live the word. I just pray you'd encourage everyone toward yourself. And we love you and we really do thank you, God, for saving us. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. We thank you so much and we do believe in you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. What a way to end the show, huh? Amen. We do have a little bit of t-shirts and stuff back there in our trailer. Okay.